Hey guys, my name is Annie and welcome to my channel, 10 to Life, where I am bringing you full true crime cases in under 10 minutes. Full cases, start to finish, but only what you want to hear. None of the boring storylines or the empty plots, just the key facts, the most insane details, and all the unexpected stuff we know happens along the way. I'm coming to you directly from my apartment here in Brooklyn, New York, which if you're watching the video version of this on my YouTube channel, you can see beautiful New York behind me. And if you're listening to the podcast version of this, but you want to check out the video version, feel free to head over to my YouTube channel. If you guys like what you hear, please like, comment, share, review, and don't forget to subscribe by clicking that subscribe button below. If you have any case recommendations, send them my way. I would love to hear them. And don't forget to follow me on social at underscore Annie Elise. So let's get into the case. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about brand new updates that just occurred in the Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell case. So yesterday, Lori's attorney petitioned for Lori's bail to be reduced from the $1 million amount that it's currently set at. This comes after prosecutors dropped two of the felony charges against Lori for child abandonment and desertion, and that happened earlier this month. Now, her attorney is saying that with the lesser charges she's facing, her bail really isn't warranted to be at that high amount, and so that's why he requested it be dropped from the $1 million. Lori's attorney also submitted a request for a change of venue in the Madison County hearing, which is supposed to be taking place this Friday. And for that hearing, that's on her misdemeanor charges, which she entered a plea of not guilty in, and those charges are for obstruction, solicitation, and committing a crime, and contempt of court. Now, in addition to these three misdemeanor counts that she's pleading not guilty to, which, hello, we know you're guilty, but that's a whole different conversation, she also had those two felony charges I was mentioning that were earlier dropped, and in addition to that, she has two more felony charges that were slapped on her earlier this month in relation to the tampering with evidence, which is the disposal of the two children's bodies. And those felony charges are in Fremont County and she has another $1 million bail set amount for those. So I mean, the amount of charges for this woman are just insane. So now even though two of the felonies have been dropped, she still has three misdemeanors, two additional felonies. She still has a ton of charges against her and we know that where there's smoke, there's generally fire. She's currently in custody in the Madison County Jail on the $1 million bail for those three misdemeanor charges. And then as I mentioned earlier, she has another $1 million dollar bail set in the Fremont County for those two felony charges. So even if you get this bond request granted and it gets reduced, you're still not getting out. You still have a high bond. Just let it go. You're caught game over. And as a reminder, Lori's husband, Chad Daybell, is also in custody right now in a different jail in Fremont County for the same felony charges. He was also charged with two felony counts of conspiracy to conceal, tamper, or alter evidence, and the two charges are one for each of the children. And we all know that court documents now say that they discovered the bodies on Chad's property through the search warrant and that they were really led to that because of the GPS data that was pulled from Alex Cox, Lori's brother's phone records. And that's what led them to Chad's property. That's where they started searching the property and discovered the remains. That's not new information. However, new court documents state that evidence shows the data they pulled from Alex Cox's phone that led them to Chad's property also indicate that there is no possible way he could have dug and buried JJ's body alone. And that is why these two charges now have been set on not only Chad, but also on Lori, because they say Alex could not have done it alone. There is evidence proving that. However, Lori and Chad still have not been directly charged with the murder or anything tied directly to the murder of the two children, which I suspect will come in a short amount of time and in the near future. However, they still have not formally been charged with anything directly tied to the murder itself. And as a reminder, we still don't know the exact cause of death. We know that JJ was discovered wrapped in a bag with duct tape around the bag, and we know that Tylee's body was badly, badly burned, dismembered, and they had to actually identify her through completely separate records because she was completely unrecognizable. Which also begs the question of why was one child killed in a way that looks to be less traumatic, less gruesome, and one was killed in a way that is so gruesome. And we know that Lori and Tylee had some altercations leading up to this. They had a little bit of a disjointed relationship and often argued. So could this have been more of a crime of passion where she was angry at Tylee? We don't know yet. And once we hear the cause of death and that information is released, I think that we'll learn a lot more about the disposal of the bodies and why those two methods are so far apart from each other. 
It was also announced yesterday that Lori still remains a suspect in the death of her ex-husband, Charles. And he's the one, if you remember, Alex Cox, Lori's brother, shot Charles in self-defense. And so they have announced that she is still it remains a suspect in that and they're actively investigating it. In fact, they've brought in a new detective to lead the investigation. So I'm really interested to see what comes out of that because as I'm sure you guys can agree with me, she most likely is guilty for that as well because Alex was essentially her hitman who did all of her dirty work for her. It was such a weird brother-sister relationship. So as all of this is now starting to pile on, it looks as though the House of Cards is finally falling down on Lori and Chad, which if you remember, they thought the world was ending and they claimed it was ending July 22nd, which today is what, the 14th? So that's seven days from now. You've got a week, you crazy cult kids. I mean, it's over. Your world at least is over. All of this new information that has surfaced and the court appearances yesterday and all of these requests for the lowered bail amount and she's still a suspect, this comes off of the heels of a bombshell of news that came out last week regarding Lori Vallow's daughter, Tylee. And that news that was released last week indicated that Tylee, Lori's daughter, had claimed her father, Joe, was molesting her when she was a child. I mean, this poor girl could not catch a break. She was betrayed by her father, her mother. Who, she, who did she have advocating for her and looking out for her besides her distant relatives and her brother. I mean, and Charles even, but like to be betrayed by your own father, your own mother, it is horrible. The court documents indicate that there was an ongoing custody battle between Lori and Joe, and that so much so they actually had to have Tylee evaluated by a therapist while all of this was going on. And in one of those meetings with that therapist in 2008, when Tylee was just five years old, she indicated that Joe had molested her. In the documents, it states that Tylee reportedly told the therapist that she was happy she was spending more time with her father, that she had fun and she was looking forward to the visits, but then she paused and dropped a piece of information that was very concerning. And there was concerned raised because she said that when it came to overnights with her and her brother Colby that she was nervous about those continuing and she said something along the lines of and I quote I'm scared about the overnights when the therapist of course then probed Tylee for more information she admitted it was because Joe was molesting both her and her brother Colby then the report states when Lori came into the session towards the end of the session Tylee looks over to Lori and says, I did it, I told her. Tylee's brother Colby also has gone on record a few months ago saying that Joe had sexually abused him as well. And he has said that when he told Lori, she was absolutely devastated. So this kind of brings a whole new sense of questions to the table as well. In regards to Tylee, we don't know if that alleged abuse truly took place or if she was coached by Lori to say it took place in effort to win full custody. Because we know that when she walked in back into the room, when Lori walked back into the room, that Tylee looked at her and said, I did it, I told her, as though Lori was gonna double check that to make sure she told her. And maybe that was simple enough because Lori wanted to make sure they knew, or was it because Lori was telling Tylee to share this information with the therapist, again, in effort to get full custody? And when the abuse was happening to Colby, perhaps the abuse was solely happening to Colby, but when Lori heard of that, not only was she so devastated and of course wanted to retaliate and get justice for Colby, but perhaps she used that as an opportunity to loop Tylee into this and say, you know, he's also been assaulting her and really strengthen the case against Joe. Or maybe Joe really was a horrible human being and molested both of them. We don't know. I really hope for the sake of Tylee that the abuse did not take place and that her mom was just trying to coach her because even though that is horrible and traumatic enough because you're pinning this girl against her father and you're filling her mind with all sorts of false things, at least the sexual abuse wouldn't have been taking place and she would have been spared in that regard because we know she was being emotionally and mentally abused for years by her mother. So I just hope that this poor girl would at least had some piece of her life that was still innocent and pure and not completely destructed at the hands of her parents. And to give you a little bit of information about Lori and Joe, they were married from 2001 to 2004 and Joe died of a suspected heart attack in 2008. However, the FBI said that given everything new that has unraveled and surfaced over the last year, they are now investigating the death of Joe because shocker, we all know that Lori could 100% be involved in that. She was involved in Charles' death, allegedly. They were involved in Chad's wife, Tammy's death, allegedly. She was involved in Alex's death, allegedly. I mean, she is literally, what is it called? What's the term? A black widow. She Anywhere she goes, there's destruction and death and turmoil. So it doesn't surprise me that they're taking a closer look at his death. As I mentioned earlier in the video, she is set to go to her first hearing this Friday for those misdemeanor charges. And then for the two felony counts of tampering, concealment, and destruction of evidence, her court date is scheduled for August 10th. So stand by, I'm going to keep you updated because I am literally glued to this case because it is just so important to me and I 
really want to make sure that there's justice for these two kids and that these two insane cult lunatic, narcissistic, insane, crazy people. I said insane twice, but that's how insane they are. I just really want them to be held accountable. So I'm literally watching everything and every move that they're making. So I will continue to keep you updated and keep you apprised of any new information that comes up. If you enjoyed listening to the update of this case, please subscribe to my channel by clicking on that subscribe button below. If you're listening to the podcast version, please review, comment, like, share. I love hearing from you guys. I love when we get dialogue going through the comment threads as well here on YouTube. So please let me know what you think. I'm also going to be trying to get my lives scheduled regularly so that we have a standing time once a week to have these live conversations with each other and do just kind of a case discussion. So stay tuned for more information on that and we will talk soon. Thanks so much for listening, you guys. Have a good one. Bye.